The circular economy is an economic system that's an innovation engine that puts the re back into resources. It allows for continuous benefit to be provided to all generations by the reuse of things, of material, energy, water, by designing things that can become useful over and over again. This is the largest business opportunity ever seen by our species. And the leaders in the economic future will be people who understand that by design, we can create perpetual assets and optimize them to create businesses that thrive and are enjoyed by people everywhere, all the time, forever. Why would we want to miss that? We see two nutrient cycles today. One is the biological nutrient cycle, which is the ancient one of life itself, but the other is probably about 5,000 years old, which is technical nutrition, when we started you know, chipping rocks or banging metal. So if we start with the biological nutrient system, these are things that come from life and go back to life. So if we look at the biological cycle of fabric, we could design it instead of what we saw in the early 90s, where you saw wool and Ramey blends that would have their trimmings declared hazardous waste by the Swiss government, and they had to be sent to Spain for burial or incineration because they couldn't be buried or burned in Switzerland. We can redesign that to eliminate the concept of waste. So in the case of textiles, we'd redesign the textiles to become trimmings that are mulch for the local garden club and grow strawberries, and the water coming out of the textile mill is as clean as Swiss drinking water. This reduced cost by 20% and allowed a textile industry to stay in Switzerland. That is designed for the circular economy. On the other hand, there are technical nutrients, the camera that takes this, or the computer that you're watching this on. These are technical nutrients. These are materials that we can design for endless reuse. A really fabulous example of technical nutrition is aluminum. In the last 150 years, pretty much 75% of all the aluminum made by humans and used is still in use. And so it is exactly what we talk about in technical nutrition. It can be a window, it can be a piece of furniture, and it's valuable, it's collected, it's reused, ad infinitum. That's a great example of a technical nutrient. Engaging with circular economy by design is fascinating. If we look at different sectors, we realize that a lot of people will say, this is a very interesting theory, but how does it work in practice? Of buildings for, that I get to do, because I'm an architect, is design the River Rouge plant for Bill Ford, where we replaced you know, hard asphalt roofing with green roofs, the largest in the world, but we ended up saving for $35 million in capital expense day one over conventional stormwater management. For business people, this is a one minute decision. Another example would be in the furniture industry, we see the companies like Steelcase and Herman Miller designing for disassembly where all the materials are designed for reuse. Because this way we harvest yesterday's products for tomorrow's products. In personal care and home care, we see companies like Aveda and Method in personal care and then soaps and things like that, where all the materials are designed to be safe in the water as they're used, safe on your skin, and even the packaging is considered as nutrients for the next cycle of packaging. So we can add all kinds of products to these lists and just about any company can engage with these issues in a very profitable way. Peter Drucker, the management consultant, pointed out in 1984 in his book, The Effective Executive, on page one, that it's a manager's job to be efficient and do something the right way, but it's the executive's job to do the right thing. Executives can work from their values to produce value. And one of the problems, as we see today, if you only start with numbers and value, you can go to tactics, you can go to strategies and set measurements and goals, but you're benchmarking. And your business may be changing while you weren't paying attention, and you're benchmarking against yesterday instead of advancing into tomorrow. So we find that it's very powerful for executives to start with their values because you've gone beyond benchmarking to what is the future look like that you intend and how do you design into it? And then we give it to the engineers and produce the value. So let's say you're a CEO 
and you want to join the circular economy, what do you do? Well, the first thing is to take an inventory and see what it is you're doing and understand which parts of it are not good and which ones are good and where you want to go. And then we're going to articulate what we do want for the future. And you're going to do both at the same time. Let's get rid of the things we don't want. Let's increase the things we do want. And my goal is 100% fabulous. That is what executives can do. That's leadership.